it's another tech and gadget haul and there's a ton of stuff we've got to unbox today and everything inside these boxes is a mystery so are we going to get some good stuff or are we going to get some crazy stuff welcome back to another episode of Stu's Reviews Unboxing But before I start with the pile of parcels over there, I want to start with this. I mentioned a few months back in an unboxing that you should buy a fan before the heat hits. Well, I'm doing the same this time with a heater. Now I recognise not everyone's going to make use of something like a heater, but if you're like me and have an office outside of the house, then it's really important. So, I got this. Polonis oil radiator. Good lord. Off you go. It's a wine oil filled radiator. Well, supposedly they are the most efficient that you can buy as like an external radiator. So the Polonis Phoenix oil radiator has a maximum output of 2,500 watts, keep things toasty in rooms as big as 25 meters squared. It supposedly has a higher heating efficiency with volcano vents, which provide 30% greater heating capability and 68% greater efficiency. It's got simplistic controls on the front with its dual dial thermostat control. It has built in overheat protection, tip protection, and an anti-scold backplane, but most importantly, it runs completely silent, which means I can film whilst it's heating the gallery and keeping me toasty. I've just thought of another reason why you might get one of these, even if you don't have a garden office or somewhere to heat up. Something like this is slim and small enough to hide away underneath the stairs, but if you get an issue this winter with your boiler, which for some reason old people are always getting issues with their boilers, anyway, anyway, that's another story, it's worth having something like this lying around as a bit of an emergency, because if something does go with your heating, then you've got this that you can whip out and heat your rooms. Kind of makes sense. Anyway, I'll leave a link below to this oil radiator. You can go check that out for yourselves. But this is your sign to go and buy a spare radiator just in case. Right, let's start with this one. Sounds a bit strange. <laughs> How bizarre. Extra select seed mix wild bird food. Okay, well, this episode is going to be an interesting one straight off the bat. Well, that started a bit strangely, let's say. Let's have a look what this is. Zera. Experience the Zera difference. Okay, we have an iPhone 14 case here by a company called Zera. This actually looks really quite nice. You've got a very, very nice metal ring around the outside to protect the cameras. This awesome kind of MagSafe thing. Actually, this is funny because I have a, another one by CaseQ here that has this exact same MagSafe kind of built-in stand. However, this is nice because it's got the metal ring around the outside there. Let's get in on and have a look. It's kind of a sort of softer, not quite silicon, not quite plastic. A little bit in between. I'm not sure which one I prefer. I like them both for different reasons. I think this has a thicker uh, bumper around the outside for added protection and I do like the extra metal bits so I really like this I think it's a really really nice case by Zera experience the Zera difference Ooh, right here I've got the rolling square air card and I've been desperate to try this out in fact this is basically a find my wallet so uh there's a couple of companies that do very very similar things that work with the find me network on apple devices and rolling square have brought theirs out now what makes it different is the appearance is so much nicer than anything i've had a look at hey that is very nice it's really cool because you can see all of the components inside and what's more interesting is 
It's metal. It's partly made of metal. And that's interesting because the competitor that I've tried, the Chipolo card spot, I think, has been all plastic. And although I like that device, mine actually broke when I sat on it in my pocket at one point. So that had to go in the bin. This feels a bit more robust. Oh, I'm well impressed. This is a really nice piece of kit. And I've always liked rolling square devices always they do some really innovative stuff this is no different an awesome design little piece of kit with some added benefits over its competitors <laughs> 8k fiber active optical hdmi cable 10 meters ultra high speed mm. okay well, without plugging this in, I'm not going to be able to really tell you much. And to be honest, most HDMI cables are just HDMI cables. Most of it is just gimmicky marketing. I'm sure there's someone right now who's about to go down to the comments going, actually. Okay, so first impressions are, wow, that is a hefty, meaty piece of kit. Woo! Look at that. Look at this. Oh, wow. Okay. It would actually appear that this is powered as well because it has its own little cable there. You plug your HDMI cable into it and then put the power in. Does it need it? I don't know. It tells me here. Let's have a look. In the event of where no image display, connect the 5 volt USB power adapter between the source or the display. Uh, and it should work. Probably massively overkill for a lot of people, but I'd imagine that could be really useful if you need that type of thing. Hmm. Okay, this is the BenQ IdeaCam S Pro. Let's have a look. Ooh, look at that. That is, oh, okay, that's joined in with the cable. Okay, just the cable is hardwired into this. I'm not so keen on that. And that's because if you wanted to use this with potentially a longer cable or, you know, you wanted the webcam further away from you, that's going to be very limiting because it's built into it already. It looks like a neat product, though. It's made of metal, very similar to sort of BenQ design. We've got this weighted... Um, thing that goes on the back of your monitor, like a lot of BenQ stuff, and then you can just sit that on there, I guess, like that. There you go, like that. Very, very similar to the light bar that I have at the moment. And then we've got this, which is a macro lens, supposedly. I don't, oh, it's sort of, oh, look at that. Wait, is that supposed to stick on like that? Oh, it magnetizes. That is a really, really neat piece of kit. And it's got a ring, ring light around it as well so that you can illuminate your macro lens and yourself whilst you're using it. Why you'd need a macro lens, I don't know. It's a very niche product, could be useful. Let's take a look at the quality. Well, I'm using it in a relatively dark scenario at the moment, so it's got a lot of noise, but the white balance seems to be flickering a bit. There's like a bit of weird sort of flashing and artifacting around. Let's turn the light on. Uh, gives us a bit more light, uh, not a great deal. A little bit disappointed as a regular webcam, but uh, let's try it with the macro function. Well, it works, and for the right person, it could be quite good, but this is such a niche product. Okay, hold on a minute. I don't know what this is. Last unboxing episode, I mentioned that I'd ordered something for myself to play around with on camera because when I saw it on Twitter, I just had to try it. I thought I'd save it for an unboxing, and I think this is it. It feels what do you think it is? Any guesses? Actually, it looks a bit suspicious. <laughs> I've been so excited. This, uh, um, I don't really actually know the proper name of these. An electric erhu, this is called. I think it's also known as an automophone or automatone or something like that. I was desperate to try one of these. Okay. <laughs> right, okay. Let me turn it on. Is it on? Oh, it needs some bloody batteries. The idea of this is that I can, I've got this little touch thing up here and I can. Oh, 
but I have a mouth. So. Oh, here we are. Hmm, hold on. It doesn't have as much wow wow as I thought it was going to. Hold on. Yes, I have lost my mind. Look at the bit on the top. Something quite fun about it. There is something, guys. <laughs> okay, the XTU J10 battery powered doorbell camera. Let's take a look. Okay, it says 100% wire free. Mm, if it doesn't have a solar panel, it's not wire free. Because it does mean you have to charge it eventually. But it will be wireless up until that point. Now, I've tried some XTU stuff before. And actually, the previous door doorbell was pretty good. So, in the box, we've got some stickers. 24-7 monitoring by XTU. And we have the doorbell. Which has... It's quite unusual, actually. It's got like a little angler on the back. So it looks to me like you can angle it with the panel on the back. You can have it left or right if you mount it either side. Is that detachable? Doesn't look it. We've got a little screw on the bottom to adjust it. We've got a great big motion sensor on the front as well here. It's quite good. And quite a nice button as well. What else is in the box? Looks to me like it's got an... Oh, it's turning on. Looks to me like in the box we've got an included chime as well. So that should go off when we ring. However, it uses batteries and lo and behold, triple A's. Three triple A's, which I'm very short of at this moment in time, so I can't test this right now. Oh no, I'm lying, look! They give you some triple A batteries. Right, let's get these plugged in and have a look and see what the quality is like. Now the quality of this is not too bad, considering that we're in the same dark environment as we were during the bank queue. I actually think it's doing really well. One thing it's not too good at though is the sound. Sounds pretty bad. But the quality is alright. Got a mystery white box here. Ah, I know what this is. Ah, this explains the bird seed. <gasps> yeah! Look, this is cool. Okay, I can't get all of this out now. Again, it's going to be a little bit impractical to show you, but I will. I might hook it up. I might not. Depends if I've got time to do this or not. But I wanted to review one of these. This is basically a wireless or Wi Fi uh, enabled bird feeder. Look at this. This is really cool. So inside there is a little camera and basically look at this hat it's kind of this hat looks really fun and then you open this here and you can put the bird feed and stuff in there but uh this can use ai to detect what birds are actually feeding at the station and i think that's incredible i cannot wait to test this out and have a look at all the birds because i'm really fortunate and live in a cool area with like woodpeckers and all sorts of other birds that i have no idea what they are I need this to tell me what they are, and that is exactly the purpose of it. So this is going to be in a review real soon. I believe this is from... I don't know. I'll find out. It's not obvious. This might be a prototype, in fact. Hmm. Cervical traction and light therapy relaxer. Okay, well, no, well, I'm gonna have a look at it. We'll have a look and see what this is gonna be like. Okay, user manual. Place behind your neck. Oh, okay, so you can do your neck, not just your cervix. Okay, this seems like a really interesting product. Um, I hope it has battery. Oh my God, I hope it has battery. So, it's just light therapy relaxer. That's all it is. Uses light therapy. Okay, here we are. needs to be plugged in so let's get it plugged in so usb-c that's promising let's turn it on oh that's bright
It says it's got a temperature thing on it. I've just changed it to the highest one. I can't it's already hot. So this is possibly, it does get hot. This is possibly very similar to the sort of thing you'd get in like saunas, as an example. The idea is, maybe it's getting a bit warm, I don't know. The idea here is basically I lie down. In fact, I'm probably gonna have to go on the floor to show you this. But I lie down and put my neck on it and then that's it. It sort of just heats my neck up, I think. I'm gonna leave it on just over there for a moment, out of the way. So I can see it and I'll come back to that in a second and see if it is hot. So I'm genuinely intrigued to see if that actually works. Hmm. Right, is this hot? It is! It is hot. And actually, this is kind of cool. This is quite a cool device because, no pun intended there, because uh, it means that you don't have to use anything like deep heat or anything like that. It's just actually giving you that red light therapy that warms you up. Uh, warms your neck up and hopefully should alleviate any muscle problems or muscle soreness. I actually think that's a really cool idea. The Bee Bird Note 5. Looks like some kind of pen or something. No, it's not. It's an ear cleaner. The Bee Bird Note 5 ear cleaner. Okay. This will be interesting. You get to see inside my ears. Well, lucky you. Okay, in the box, it does look like a pen. What does that say? Omnidirectional tweezer switch. Okay, so it's got like a, an, a light on the end of it. Quite a soft silicon tip. Uh, I don't know what the omnidirectional tweezer switch does though. What does it do? Right, that's a little kind of scoop endy bit, but we've got actual, well, that's the omnidirectional tweezer bit. So it's got actual, look at this. Oh, that's cool. I can go in there and get anything out of my ears that's in there. Oh, God knows what this is gonna look like. Okay, so that's a little tweezer thing and then it looks like you can put the scoop back on. I don't know if that's intended to go on there. I think in here, we've got a selection of different uh, tools, ear cleaning tools, like soft kind of cleaning tips. First criticism is that they are gonna be the most fiddly, fiddly things in the world. I apologize for whatever you guys are about to see. This is gonna be pretty gross, I'd imagine. Just another episode of Stu's Reviews, huh? Eh? Oh, look, there's my eardrum. Actually, it's cleaner than I thought. Look, oh God, that's horrible. Look away now. Oh, actually, that's less than I thought. Look, there's a tiny little bit of wax in my ear. That's far less than I anticipated, actually. Okay, we've got a ton of Miros stuff here. It looks like some plugs to power it as well. To be honest, I can't get every single one out and have a look at these. It's gonna be crazy. So, let's have a quick peek at them. Uh, just to give you an idea. What I might do is take a look at this because I do use a lot of Miros stuff already within my smart home. I use a lot of their plugs. In fact, they're everywhere. I've got one down there. I've got one on each of my desks. I've got one in the storage unit. They're everywhere because they're really, really good quality and they do multi-gang smart plugs as well with individual control, which I absolutely love. Um, so taking a look at their wider smart home might be a really good idea for a full episode. These look nice. These are the contact sensors. They're kind of like a smooth, rounded pebble design. Bit white plastic blob, like most smart home sensors these days. But not too bad all the same. Pretty unobtrusive. Okay, I thought that was going to be a display. It isn't a display at all. It's just a... Sort of a round thing. With what seems to be some kind of exposure type thing on it. Hmm. Come back to that one. Don't know how that one works. Maybe that's light, smart temperature and humidity. Is it a humidity sensor? I don't know what that was. Uh, we've also got uh, this. This is the smart water leak sensor kit. I think the idea of this is that it sits on the floor like that and can test whether or not you actually got water leak. Yeah, look, look, look. On the bottom, you've got three little contacts. And it must mean that when all of these three come in contact with water, it triggers. And then lastly is the smart home uh, smart smoke smart smoke alarm. <laughs> okay, looks to me like it can be powered by the plug as well. Simple design, nothing too much to talk about there. Yeah, it looks good. I'll see you back in another episode for that one. Okay, right, we've got the Ditu Pro. Okay, I think I've had one of these before. Divoom do some incredible products, and this is the Ditu Pro. 
You get a nice little bag with it, which is quite neat. Inside here, let's take a look. Now, for those who don't know, Ditu do a bunch of other LED-style speakers and displays, and they're really quite fun because you can generate your own sort of art on them through an app, and you can use existing art from a big marketplace. So, we've got a little awesome presentation box here, and inside is the most unusual retro speaker that you'll ever see. Right, let's take a look. Actually, this is good because it sort of depicts exactly what it looks like when it's on, but you're not quite prepared, I can promise you now, for what it looks like when it's on. Okay, so it's displaying us currently the time. Let's get this paired up to my phone and we'll have a listen to the sound. This does look different. I don't remember it having a big speaker on the top. Hey, do you know what? That's actually really good. I don't remember the original version of this having that. If this is a different one, I'm sure it is a different one. I'm sure of it. Anyway. This is an awesome little piece of kit. Now, obviously, you've got the display, which you can see is just the time. However, I'm... yes, look, now we're getting onto the different sort of displays that you can do. Ah, it's reactive to sound as well. So now it's doing a little mushroom that's sort of speaking as I'm speaking, which is pretty weird. Very strange. There's tons of stuff that you can do with this little speaker. And it is a good, fun little device if you wanna add something to your environment or your setup that looks cool and is immediately eye-catching. I just think it's a really fun little product that actually sounds pretty good as a portable speaker as well, surprisingly. Ooh. We've got the Insta360 Flow. Now I love Insta360 devices. Um, I use currently one of their cameras, the One X, I think it is, and I use that in my um, episodes where I do things like cycling or scooters or any form of kind of action type stuff because it allows you to reframe afterwards and you can get in front of you, behind you, above you. Absolutely incredible camera. This is their phone stabilizer, phone gimbal or AI-powered phone stabilizer. I'm excited to try this one out. Okay. Got some instructions on here. Let's see how difficult it is to get started with it straight out of the box. Now, the thing I'm going to tell you straight away is I did not expect it to be this size. This is like, this is micro. This is, is this here? So, okay, 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 okay. We've got like a little case in here. Oh my lord. In this case, there is appears to be a clamp for an iPhone. Place the phone facing up, ensure the curve uh, centered. Okay, fine. So we do this, we do this. That is centered, except it is pressing the buttons ever so slightly. Maybe it's just because of the case that I've got. Okay. Oh, look, hey, magnetizes to it. That's way more secure than I thought. Look at that. The phone is not coming off. Oh. Hey, that's really neat. That is the quickest gimbal attachment that, and detachment that I've come across. Because you've got your little magnetic big, it clips in there like that and you're done. You're ready to go. Take it off and you've got things two separate there. Yeah, you do have to have a clamp on your phone like this. But I guess if you know you're going to be using it a lot, you just leave the clamp on for the day. That's cool. Okay, so we unfold apparently. Okay, okay. Oh, oh, it turns on automatically. Oh wait, I think I should have done that with a phone on it. Like that. Here that it's vertical though. It's got a very small handle. Very, very small. Wait. It's got a built-in selfie stick thing. It's not a good idea. Oh, that's cool. Still don't know why it's Oh, okay, so you just, you literally just turn it, and there we are. Is that right? I don't know if I've done that right or not. I've got a joystick here to change angle of shooting. Oh, this is so cool. Wait. <gasps> it's got added grip in the actual 
Nah, that's so good. It's got a more grip added in. This is the best gimbal for a phone that I've ever seen. That is so cool. Slight criticism here is that if I want to do it like this, I, I can't because, at least I don't think I can because of the angle of the way it all works. So, you know, you have to kind of be up like that if you're doing it, which is, maybe I'm wrong, I don't know. I think I'd have to spend a bit more time with this. Hold on a minute, look, because this stand itself looks to me, I might be wrong, but, I think this, this might do, How well designed is that? That's just superb. That is superb. But there's something here as well that, but it looks like I have some kind of light that can be powered somehow through this. And without looking at all the instructions, I'm probably never gonna be able to get it without it. But I think this deserves a bit more playing around with in all fairness, because this is such a cool design. Now, if I'm right in saying, and that this will have an app with it and it'll allow them to do things like facial tracking and whatnot. Ah, that's how you do it. Double tap. And then to put it away, all I do is just turn this. It goes down. Click on like that. Pull that off. And I'm done. Have to say, I think that is possibly one of my favorite stabilizers for iPhone so far. We've got something called the Lipro AI Smart LED Bulb. I don't know what's AI about it. AI powered, is it chat GPT powered or something like this. Now the big problem here is that it looks to me like these are bayonet fittings and I don't have any bayonet fittings in this room currently to test it. I've got E14 and then I've got big panel lights above me. So that's not gonna work, is it? I'll have a quick peek and then we can go inside and have a look in a moment. It's a light bulb. Let's go and have a look. Something tells me this AI thing is not that good. I've just taken a photo of myself and it's now doing that because it thinks that that's what kind of lighting I need. To be honest, that's going to cause me to have a stroke. Not relax me. The colours are good though. Well, it looks like a bit of a gimbal month this month. Look at this, it's another one. We've got the Hoem iSteady M6. This looks like a bit of a beefy boy. Okay, let's have a look. Okay, lovely case that this comes with. I do like that. Let's have a look inside here. Bit disappointed on there, it's got gold, in here it's got red, but this looks like a mean machine. Oh wow. There's a ton of stuff here, it looks like we have some focus ring on the side, we've got the ability to move it around. If the other gimbals we've had have been consumer, this I would say is prosumer, especially if you shoot on your iPhone. Turn it on. That was well quick. You see how fast that was? That is awesome. Okay, this is really cool. We've got an awesome little display on here as well. Looks to me like it gives you kind of information about various different things to do with the options that you've got. It is it is what it is, it's a, it's a gimbal. This is pretty cool because it does allow you to have a lot more range than other gimbals. So you can go right down, right the way up. You can use it under, oh God, it doesn't know what it's doing. Use it underneath if you'd like. Flip it back over. God, that corrects itself really fast. I'm actually genuinely impressed with that. We've got a tripod screw thread there for attachments. Overall, this is a really neat product. If you are into your video work with an iPhone and you're looking for something prosumer with loads of attachments, tripod screw threads and everything, this is actually a really, really good option. The Hoem M6, iSteady M6. I'm impressed. All right, this is interesting. The Wanmo sling by PGY Tech. So it just looks like a sling bag with a ton of pockets. Okay, so it goes on there like that. Oh, wow. It's even got little dividers that you can use inside the bag to 
essentially divide it up for your camera gear. Actually, this is a really, really nice bag. Well, I must say, it's a sling bag. This is pretty cool. Possibly waterproof as well. Little zip pocket in the top. Oh, this is the nicest sling bag for a camera gear I've seen. Very cool. Well, if you are into your bags and your camera gear and you're looking for a sling bag, I must say it's probably a good contender. It's actually a really, really nice bag. Right, we've got a parcel that says Cospet. Cosmet Tank X1, Breaking Boundaries. Ooh, okay. Let's have a look at this. This is a fitness tracker style device. Wow. Kind of got very interesting design here that is very, very much inspired by the Apple Watch Ultra Color Scheme. I've noticed a lot of smartwatch brands now using that kind of metal and orange the Apple Watch Ultra used. And it's not bad, it's actually a really nice looking device if you like fitness trackers. Let's turn it on and see what it does. Okay. Oh, it looks all right. A lot of information on that display. I guess if I was after a fitness tracker with a more rugged design, this is the kind of thing I'd probably go for. It's not the most snappiest of uh, software, but it's not too bad. It could be pretty good. I guess very much from a style perspective, this is all right. It's not too bad. It doesn't necessarily float my boat, but it does have Gorilla Glass military grade and apparently it's certified ip68 i don't think it's going to break any boundaries for me but it's certainly it's an interesting product jesus christ this is heavy this one oh good lord the tronsmart halo 200 um this looks really interesting apparently in here i've got Sometimes, I don't know what that is. No idea what that is. Oh, is it something to do with... Oh, is this a karaoke machine? And I will always love Stu. Okay. Whoa, I mean, this is, this is their biggest speaker that I've seen. Can't be battery powered though, can it? Surely. It is battery powered. Whoa! It's got a grab handle on the top. We've got, what's this button do? Okay, that turns the lights on and off. Got some of the settings that are similar on the Transmart devices, things like the sync. Got a great big dial on the top, which is really nice for changing the volume. It made a noise then. What did I just do? I don't know. Let's pair it up. Oh, look at that. That is cool. Can I change colors? Oh, I might be able to do it in the app, actually. Hold on, there is a Transmart app. Oh, I hope I can change the colors of these. No, it doesn't look like I can change between a bunch of different colors, like color patterns, but it doesn't give me actual individual control. That is a shame. That was a bit of criticism that I had with the um, Bang Max because it didn't let you control the LEDs. Even though obviously it does different colors, I can't control them individually. So I hope they add that in at a future point, but let's have a listen to some music. I'm prepared though for my ears to be blown off. That is cool! I genuinely like this. It is an awesome speaker. And actually, do you know what? Tronsmart are really pulling the hat out of the bag recently. All of the speakers that I've tried, I'd say in the past six months from them, some of the newer stuff like the portable one and this, and especially the Bang Max, they've all 
up their game significantly. Tronsmart have really stepped their game up when it comes to sound quality. And I'm really, really impressed by this speaker. I think it's really, really good. It doesn't go as loud as I expected, actually. For the size of it, I thought it was going to go a little bit louder, but the quality is still there. The quality is still there at top level. Overall, a really awesome another addition to the Tron Smart range. I think it's really cool, and it's a great party speaker. Well, that comes to the end of all of the items in this month's episode. Now, obviously, I have to give the rosette to the best item that we've had, or that I think we've had in this unboxing haul. And this is the item that I think every single one of you should go out and buy immediately because it's just incredible. Um, it is not going to be this. That's all I can tell you. But before I can tell you which one is going to be, I want to say a massive thanks to all of these guys. These guys are my patrons, and I couldn't do it without you guys. Thank you very much for being a patron. And if you do want to see any behind the scenes videos and content, there's loads of stuff on there. Go and check it out. You can actually follow me for free over on Patreon, but you'll also get access to behind the scenes videos and extra stuff by becoming a member of the country club over there. But just as important as these guys are you guys who watch these episodes. Guys, make sure that you hit that thumbs up and that subscribe. But every single one of you, I can't thank you enough to all of the likes and all the subscribes that you've done over the years, it means a hell of a lot. And it means that I can keep doing awesome stuff like this and showcasing some rather bizarre things like that automaton in the middle of the phone or whatever it's called. But the award for today's item. First place goes to this, the Insta360 Flow. I think it's so cool. It's a wickedly designed product. I do have some reservations about some of the design, but I guess we'll find out a little bit more about that when I come around to do a full episode. But overall, I actually think this is a proper cool piece of kit. And if you do like shooting with your iPhone, maybe not prosumer, but you just enjoy taking it out and about on holidays, this is a space saver and is a really neat product to have. So this wins first place. But I do want to know what your choice is. So let us all know in the comments below what you feel is the best item from today's haul. And I will pin the winner and it'll be an audience choice. Stop the press. I'm going to pull a bit of an Apple thing here and say we've got just one more thing. And that's because it's been a couple of weeks and I've just found this underneath the desk drawers. I opened it to take a look and I realized I probably missed it from the unboxing. So, welcome back to this very short segment of Stu's Reviews at the very end. Hmm. But what we've got is something quite interesting. It's something from Anchor. This is the Power Expand 11 in 1 USB C PD Hub. And like everything Anchor, I'm usually pretty impressed with it. So I'm excited to have a look at this and see what it's like. Oh, okay. We've got instructions which we never read. We've got this thing. This looks industrial. Wow. Okay, so we've got an armored cable here, which is quite interesting. That looks rugged, USB-C on that end. And this seems to have every single adapter under the sun. We've got a USB 3, we've got two USB, we have a USB-C, we've got a USB-C power, we've got an SD card slot, a micro SD card slot, a HDMI, and something that I've never, not seen before, a display port adapter. Don't usually get that on these portable things. Oh, and we've got an ethernet and a headphone jack as well. Wow, that is a universal adapter. But it's quite chunky, but then it literally has everything under the sun. I think this is awesome. And what's this? I've not seen this before with an adapter. This looks like a case. And that's exactly what it is. And this must be a little pouch that that goes into. Well, look at that. Well, if anything else Anchor is to go by, such as their Anchor Solix battery, which I reviewed recently in their Eufy range, this is going to be top quality. And do you know what? I think this is now going to be my go-to adapter in my tech bag. It has literally got everything I could possibly need, including a display port, which I've needed more than I thought I'd ever need. I've got a monitor over there that has a display port on it. This is cool. I really, really like this. 
Not bad. Not a bad way to end this episode of Stu's Review. So guys, it is finally the end. There isn't going to be any more One More Things. I'll see you back for another episode of Stu's Reviews soon.